So hello my dear Hillbilly City Trolls, today's video is going to be very interesting cause we'll be talking about the possible build of Yai Miko, yes you heard me right, that lady with kitsune ears and we'll also discuss about her gameplay style and her kit and I know most of you know Yai Miko, not because of the story but because she has two very big reasons to get popular in the sim creating factory known as Genshin Impact. So yes, this video is going to be very interesting and before starting off this video, I have a daily commission for you. So your first commission is to like this video, your second commission is to subscribe this channel, your third commission is to comment on this video and your fourth and final commission is to share this video. So Bard, roll the intro. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. So first let's talk about her build and let me tell you first, the build is completely based on my opinion and it's not official. So being an electro character, Yai will obviously use electro stones for ascension and these materials can be acquired by defeating these following bosses. The electro hypothesis, the thunder manifestation, primordial geoviship, the electro one, child with an E, of course I am talking about that for 2E and of course at last, Ejdaha, the electro version. Let's talk about her materials, the Vaidraha amethyst sliver and just like the sliver, you need the fragment, chunk and gemstone too. So boss drops will probably be acquired acquired from electro bosses. In Inazuma of course, the only electro boss we have is the thunder manifestation. So Yai might need storm beads as well for ascension of course. She will also need a speciality from Inazuma. So I have prepared some candidates. First one is the Sakura Bloom, probably the most fitting speciality for Yai Miko. After all it's pink which is obviously close to purple color, the color of an electro. And yes, it can be largely found around the Narukami shrine. in which Miko is the most experienced member, obviously because she is the chief priest of the shrine. So next one we have Tenkumo fruit, so basically there are dozens of these fruits around the Serai island, a total of 176 if I am correct. This material is only used by Raiden Shogun so far and as we know she is relatively close to Yae, so it is possible that they might share this material. The next one we have Onikabuto beetle, so far they aren't used by anyone and it's possible that they might be used by Arataki Ito since he mentions bug fights but it can also be possible that it can be required for Yai Miko as well but it has the least possibility in my opinion. So now the last ascension material needed are mob drops. So I have few candidates for this as well. First is slimes, one of the most common enemies in the whole of Tevat. Next we have Samachel scrolls, after that Wopo flower nectar and spectral cores. All these items are preferred by catalyst users so there is a possibility that Yai Miko Miko will use one of these or it can also be possible that she can come up with something different although I hope they are Wopo flower nectars I have saved plenty of them so please mihoyo let it be Wopo flower nectar you can take bard instead get lost bard so yeah, it's pretty much it and I think these are the materials required for Yai Miko although what do you guys think what materials Yai Miko will use you can comment down below and if I talk about her gameplay style so her best combat talent will from her catalyst and burst talent and I think her signature artifact would be Simnava's reminiscence, the burst energy drain and her burst support capability will be similar to Mona but longer duration and different function and I personally prefer her to be an independent elemental damage dealer having the Raiden Shogun in the team. Both of them will benefit each other if her burst will turn out as what I imagined and she can also work best with Ayaka, Sayu and Raiden Shogun cause as we know she is the head priestess of the Grand Narukami Shrine, a catalyst user and her vision is Electro and if I talk about her constellation, so it's Vulpes, Sapiens, her normal attack, the Thunder Sakura in which she waves 4 consecutive swarms of Electro particles in the form of Sakura petals for her auto attack and holding this attack summons an electrostatic field of blossoms from center up that launches enemies and halts movements dealing area electro damage, her charge attack damage is increased and stamina consumption is cancelled either by stacking normal attacks or using elemental skills. This mechanics could be something entirely new. Her second talent passive allows her to strike down an instance of lightning during her charge attacks and her charge attacks can also score 
critical hit. She also have a Biocos elusive form. She metamorphoses into her original fox form, which she can use to move or travel in a distance. Using this skill, immediately leaves an apparition to her previous position that will trick and taunt surrounding enemies. It will also deal electro shock waves as the apparition ends. She can continue moving with a fox form when holding movement controls. It it only stops when moving keys aren't used or when the apparition ends, and it also increases her attack speed. And this ability can only be performed for 10 seconds, and its cooldown is 18 seconds. She can also perform the Mystic Art of Tenko Kitsune, where she releases her finest tailed fox form and imbues a spirit of illumination, which is also known as blessings, and it deals area damage that will paralyze surrounding enemies for 10 seconds. It can be noted that some electro units have defense debuffing talents such as Lisa's Burst Passive, Razor's C4 and Raiden's C2 and that is why using Shogun with Yai Miko will of course benefit your team and her signature artifact will be Shiminawa's Reminiscence set as main DPS. If you got the 4 piece set then it will be very beneficial for Yai Miko. Well I don't have any ideas for her first passive talent. I think it can be an electro damage bonus or something with damage scaling I guess. Her constellation can also increase the duration of her burst, reduce her stamina, increase her energy regeneration and grant one more skill like charge or self heal. So yes my dear healable city trolls, this is all I know about Yaimiko possible build and her gameplay. So if you guys found this video informative then like this video and also subscribe this channel. So now take care my dear healable city trolls.